Two fantastic data analysis functions are VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. So you may be familiar with those. You may also be familiar that you have to have your tables arranged in a certain way in order for VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP to work. In this video, I'll show you two other functions that you may find even more user-friendly that don't have those restrictions. They're match and they're index. And if you're doing data analysis, it's a great way to locate a specific piece of information in your tables. So one of the things that match and index help do is answer data analysis questions like this. You are, you have a big table of information or a range of information, and you want to identify uh, a certain piece of information. Like you want to just say, how many wins, points, and goal differential did Vancouver, did the Whitecaps have last year? And so to do that, especially in a range that is 1,200 rows long, it's very easy to do that with match. So let me show you, let me walk you through the process of using this function. So down here next to wins in this cell, I'm going to start the match function with equals match. And after a couple of letters, it shows me match. I can tab into it here and start to work with the syntax. So now what's the lookup value going to be? I'm going to look up the information that I enter into that cell right there. So in 19, in this case, I'm going to hit a comma and then look up array. Now the lookup array is just simply defining what you are going to look up. So I'm going to look up this column of information, but you can extend this array if you want to. What you're doing in effect is drawing the boundaries of a map that you are going to then search. If you've ever used a real estate or apartment finder type of an application on your phone or on your computer, you might be familiar with, you could type in a zip code or sometimes you can draw a circle with your finger on your phone and you say, look within this area for anything that matches. I want uh, a house with three bedrooms or I want a house that is under $300,000, whatever the case may be. So you have some criteria in your search. That's what you're doing here. So you're setting the boundaries of your search criteria that Excel will use to match. So in this case here, I don't really need to do, I could do it, it'd be fine, but I'll just do that. That is going to be the boundaries of my search. So now I'm going to hit a comma and go over to the match type. And you see that you have three options here, one, zero, or negative one. A one means that it'll look through the array for things that are less than or equal to. Exact match is just that. And for that reason, I think most of the time when you use it, you are going to end up using an exact match. But then greater than is greater than or equal to. If that is the case, if you enter that, uh, then you're obviously looking more for numbers. And you have to make sure your tables are sorted in ascending order for that to work. All right, again, with that said, I am going to... Uh, close out the syntax with a in parentheses and then hit enter. Now you see that the value here is in a it's because I don't have anything entered here. I'm going to create a drop down list to make this very easy. So what I'm going to do is go to the data tab in my ribbon and choose data validation. And in data validation, I am going to pick from a list here. And then from the list, the source, I'm just going to click and drag and define my source of information that I can enter into team. So now here's where match will be able to do its magic. If I click on this dropdown and choose Vancouver, now it returns me the row eight. Now it didn't return me the wins, and that's what the index is going to do here in just a moment. So right now you're probably thinking, okay, great. We have row eight in the array that you just selected. And by the way, many of your data tables, I've kind of made it easy on ourselves to verify that we're in row eight, but that's what most of your data tables will look like. So in your selection, match helps you identify in a list of 100 cities or 1,000 product numbers that it'll just match the row. So Vancouver is eight, Real Salt Lake is row six, Minnesota is row 10, and that's what match does. It looks through your array of data and returns the row number for the specified value. All right, now that we've looked at how match works to return us a row number, we will use the index and combine it with match and then really unlock the power of match and index to retrieve a specific piece or pieces of information. So now I'll go down to points 
And we'll just leave this alone. We'll come back and correct it. So now that we've used match to return a row, we are going to combine it with index. And index is going to retrieve a specific piece of information. And that really, that, that combined use of match and index in a nested function really kind of unlocks the data retrieval power that is in these two functions. So for this, I'm going to start by copying this function. So I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard and then hit escape on my keyboard and then start to build the index function here. So in points, I'm going to type in index and tab into the function. And now I'm just going to click on here, the insert function and bring up the arguments dialog box. So now it is giving me a choice about, am I going to select from an array or from a reference? And I'm going to indeed select from an array and click on OK. So the array, what I'm looking through is going to be this information right here. So once again, we're kind of thinking of a map that contains the values that you want to look for. That's what I'm doing here by specifying the array. The wins, the points, the goal differential, they all live within this array. So I'm going to click there again and continue to build the function. The row number, here's where I nest the match function that I've used previously. So I'll just paste that in and then remove the equals because we don't need the equal sign twice. We just need it once to indicate to Excel that the contents of the cell is a calculation. Now finally, we're into the column number. So I'll tab down into the column number field. And this is perhaps the most tricky part of using the index. So we've specified the map where the data lives, the function to help us identify the row that will match whatever I select here in this dropdown. And now the column number is the number of the column from the array where the points lives. So you just kind of have to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this case. So the points information lives in column number eight. And you can see as we're building the function that the data returned here for Vancouver is 47. And I can verify this because we're dealing with a small range of data. Yep, they had 47 points last year and that's what we should expect. So if I change this to Real Salt Lake, the points changes to 49. Yep, that checks out. So now if we want to go back and use this same nested function to retrieve wins and goal differential, all I really need to do is select, copy that function. I'm going to hit escape again on the keyboard. Go back to wins and paste this in. And now in the arguments window, the arguments dialog, all I need to really do is change the column number. And of course, I could just type it in manually in the formula bar. But in terms of the wins, that was in the second row. And again, I can verify that Real Salt Lake had 14 wins. Yep, that works out. So now if I go back to my list and let's choose San Jose. They had four wins and 21 points. Yep, yep. And then if I wanted to repeat the same thing with goal differential, just select the cell, paste in the function. And here I know that we're going to column seven to retrieve the goal differential information. So goal differential negative 22, that all checks out. So that's how you use match and index. And as I mentioned from the outset, I think really that you'll find this a little more user friendly and more powerful even than using a VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. So what do you think? Match and index going to work for your data lookup situations? If you like the video, give it a like, give the channel a subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.